Blackmagic recently announced the Ursa Mini Pro 12K, and I think quite a few people were <laughs> stunned, shocked, blown away, thought it was maybe April Fool's or something like that, considering Canon had just announced the 8K R5. Blackmagic has to beat them at their own game and offer up the Ursa Mini Pro 12K. Now, I love the Ursa Mini. I have shot with the Ursa Mini, the original 4.6K, the Ursa Mini Pro, the Gen 1, and then the Ursa Mini Pro Gen 2. All of them beautiful, wonderful, marvelous cameras. If you don't know anything about the Ursa Mini, one thing you should know, the Ursa Mini 4.6K, the original one, had an awesome giant LCD flip-out screen that they made smaller in the pros, which is not something you see on the spec sheet. It's not something anyone really tells you or goes the other way. They're like, hey, the LCD is smaller, but it's noticeably smaller, which is really irritating. Also to note on the Ursa Mini Pro Gen 2, the most recent Ursa Mini Pro, aside from the 12K that's coming, uh, the Gen 2 doesn't ship with the side handle, which is really frustrating considering it came standard in the previous models that the side handle, they just decided, no, that's out. And now you have to pay 200 bucks to get it. You suppose you could get a different side handle if you want, but it's something to note because it'll kind of probably catch you off guard if you're expecting to buy an Ursa Mini and you're like, oh, I want the Gen 2. It's the newest, latest one. And then you go, wait, where's the side handle? It's not in the box. You have to buy it separate. But anyway, let's talk about the 12K because this camera, I mean, you can shoot 12K at 60 frames a second. So you can do slow-mo 12K. That's beautiful. That's incredible. You can do 8K at 110 frames a second. You can do 4K at 220 frames a second. This camera for only $10,000. Granted, you're going to have to do some upgrades. You're going to have to get batteries. It's going to be more than $10,000. do not get me wrong. It's not $10,000 just to like shoot. Yeah, if you plug into the wall, you don't have any uh, EVF or anything like that, and you just shoot with the camera, like no batteries. Yeah, $10,000 for 12K. That's a, that's a pretty good deal, if you ask me. And considering the track record that Blackmagic has had, I'm very, very optimistic about this camera. Now, is it right for everybody? Is it right for me? Probably not. It's probably overkill at this point in time. I mean, this is definitely something meant for the high-end cinema. Like, if you're putting your projects in, in theaters, if you're going to be, I don't know... I, doing IMAX or something, right? Like that's what this camera is meant for. I'm, I'm curious to see the 12K YouTube videos, but at the end of the day, um, most people don't even have 4K monitors. Sometimes they're still 1080p. So now we're talking, we're talking about 6K, 8K, now 12K. Very valuable for uh, any kind of visual effects. If you're in After Effects, you're doing compositing, or you want to be able to reframe in post-production and do kind of like a multi-cam sort of thing. There, there are some downsides to that because it's from the one focal point of the one lens. You can kind of tell. You even get that sometimes with 4K, right, where people punch in and they pan and scan and they move stuff around. It's like you can tell that it's just a punch in and you're going to get the same effect at 8K and 12K. Is it nice that you can zoom and reframe and post without losing a ton of resolution? Yeah, that's great. Is it something you're gonna to wanna to do all the time? I don't know, uh, I shoot 4K a lot and you know I'm not usually doing a lot, about a lot of pan and scan. I want kind of the, the premium 4K look and feel, so I don't wanna degrade that. Now granted, having something 12K down sampling to 4K, I'm sure is gonna look stunning and it'll be great, just like 8K or 6K would as well. So is it the end all be all of like, you have to have the most resolution? No, same thing applies to photography. You don't have to have the most megapixels to take the best photos. Is it a helpful feature to have in certain situations? Are the additional frame rates, the higher frame rates at higher resolutions helpful? Yes, absolutely. So if those are things you need, you know, per project where you could either rent the camera or if you're doing those types of projects all the time, you could buy it. But for me, I'm not doing that stuff all the time. It's not my day in, day out of having like super high resolution stuff or super, uh, you know, high resolution and high frame rate at the, at the same time. You know, a majority of the work that I'm doing is, is, is talking head type stuff. So normal speed, like for most films, like that's kind of how it's going to be as well. If you have anything that's scripted or narrative, uh, of course, having the slow motion features like 4K 60 and 4K 120 are helpful. But is there a situation where you need 12K 60 or 4K 220? Like that's where you start to get, you know, the really high end bells and whistles that aren't always just like what you want to use on every single project. Because at the end of the day, the file sizes are going to be a lot bigger. I mean, especially if you're shooting like 
if you're getting up into kind of the raw territory or you're shooting high, high-end ProRes codecs, like having high frame rates, having high resolution in a really quality premium codec is just gonna eat through your hard drives and you're just gonna run out of space unless you're doing something that's really short, short clips, which might be good for like a music video um, where you know the final output is only three minutes, but a lot of stuff, if it's like narrative or it's documentary and you have talking heads and you're doing long form recordings, I don't wanna record 12K of an interview because at the end of the day it's probably unnecessary and you could probably do some artistic like fun creative stuff with it but again for the majority of the time most of the time these features are like overkill probably so if you can afford it by all means invest get it's ten thousand dollars like cameras have been historically a lot more expensive so in the grand scheme of things it's very very cheap and it's very very affordable especially for what it does and i love black magic so if you can afford it, by all means, invest, get it. But if you're looking at it, you're going, well, I don't know, it might be, I might for like $10,000 base for just the body, I could actually get like a whole Ursa Mini uh, Gen 2 kit. I'd say probably go that route, even if you're considering it, the because you're going to have to add on to the, the 12K as well. So it's going to be more expensive. It's going to be more like 15000 uh, yeah, probably around 15,000, all things uh, considered, maybe even higher than that, depending on if you're buying a bunch of memory cards, because those are gonna be expensive and you buy, have to buy hard drives, like those are, that's gonna eat up costs there too. So maybe 15 to 20,000, depending on how rigged out your kit is, might be better suited getting uh, Ursa Mini Pro Gen 2 for about 10K, all things included, and then you have 4.6k you can shoot raw you can do high frame rates you can do 4k 120 you can do 1080 240 like you can do a lot of the stuff that the 12k is going to do and you're going to have a fully featured camera body where you have an evf you have batteries you have memory cards you have all the things you actually need to to shoot and to film so that might be the better route to go for me that's probably what i would recommend but again if price is not an it's if it, if the price doesn't matter, then yeah, obviously get the 12K because it's just that's just awesome having having the ability to shoot 12K. Why not bring it on? And that's why I like this. What, what this makes me most excited for is not necessarily the Ursa Mini 12K, the Ursa Mini Pro 12K. Blackmagic needs to figure out their names a little bit because they've got the Ursa, which a lot of people forget about. But there's an Ursa and then there's an Ursa Mini. At least I tend to forget about the Ursa. The Ursa Mini is the one that like I want because it's smaller and it does most of the same things. I don't even think there is an Ursa 12K. I think it's just the Ursa Mini Pro 12K. As far as I've seen, maybe there's going to be an Ursa 24K. Who knows? I don't know. But what it makes me most excited about is the next generation of their Pocket Cinema cameras because the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K and the Pocket Cinema Camera 6K both very, very cool cameras do a lot of the things you would want, a much more affordable price, much smaller package for most regular shooters, like the vast majority of people out there, does everything you would need. Lacks some things like built-in ND filters, so it's not quite everything that you would want all in one, but it's close. The Ursa Mini Pro 12K makes me really excited to see what they have lined up for the Pocket Cinema, like the next iteration of that. At this point, they should probably come up with a new name. That's what I would recommend to Blackmagic. It's like Pocket Cinema, Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, Pocket Cinema Camera, like these names are too long. They're too complicated. There is a Pocket Cinema Camera and the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K is very different. So like they're not even really like the same product anymore. Come up with a new name. Ursa is a cool name, Ursa Mini, okay. And I guess it's a smaller version that kind of makes sense. Come up with some new names that aren't just pocket cinema camera. That doesn't, I don't know, it's, it's not like Red Komodo, which sounds like, oh, that sounds like a cool camera that I want to buy. I don't think people are too excited about the pocket cinema camera. I mean, I guess it's very descriptive. It tells you what it is, but you can't even fit it in your pocket. So it's not even accurate at that. Anyway, uh, going off on a tangent. The Ursa Mini Pro 12K looks really, really cool, and I would highly recommend it if you can afford it and you're willing to put down some serious money. But again, historically speaking, it's not that serious. You know, this is this is still within the realm of kind of that prosumer market of someone could reasonably afford this and they're not taking out a second mortgage on their house. I mean, it, it's getting up there. It's getting close to like car level territory of pricing, right? You're starting to get to 20,000, 30,000, 40,000. Okay, now, the red camera is like you're spending, a, you could basically get a, a car for the same price. Maybe that's not such a, a wise investment for a camera that could easily be stolen or lost. So make sure you have insurance. 
That's another thing. When you're spending a lot of money on, on, on equipment, make sure it's protected. But also, you know, don't feel like you need to buy it just to have it. I think the Gen 2 Ursa Mini Pro is fantastic. And I would highly recommend that camera, especially for somebody coming from kind of the DSLR hybrid mirrorless photography video cameras. If you want to upgrade to something that has built-in NDs, that's gonna actually look like a professional kind of cinema proper camera so people don't think that you're taking photos all the time. They know, oh, you're doing video. That's one of my biggest pet peeves about the smaller cameras is people still to this day don't understand that you can shoot video. They look and go, oh, you're taking pictures? No, you avoid all that with the Ursa Mini. It's beautiful. It's still small enough that you can fit it in a backpack. Granted, it has to be a large backpack, but you can do it. And it does everything you'd want. And it's got kind of those like high, like XLR inputs. like. It just does all the things you would want it to do right there, especially if you really got with the with the shoulder kit. Everything's there and you just put a battery on it, put a memory card in and you're ready to go. You don't have to have a, additional monitors and EVFs and ND filters and uh, audio recorders and all the annoyance that comes from hybrid shooting with smaller, cheaper cameras, which that's the trade-off, right? You spend a little bit less, you have to do some workarounds. The Ursa Mini is fantastic in that it just does everything you would want. Beautiful dynamic range, shoots ProRes. Oh, I, the best part of the Ursa Mini is just the menu interface. The touchscreen menu, if you've never used an Ursa Mini, the menu is probably the best on any camera I've ever used. And I've shot RED, shot Sony, shot Canon, shot them, I've shot them all. And the Ursa Mini is my favorite. It's like fun to use the menu. I I've talked about this. I think I did the Ursa Mini review years ago. It's just a fun menu to use. It's like your iPhone. Like that's how it feels to operate the camera and you don't and you can just do things seamlessly and you can change resolution and frame rate and formats all very quickly and very seamlessly whereas almost almost every other camera, even the GH5, which I enjoy using and it has an okay menu, it's still so cumbersome to go in there and move stuff around and you're always on the wrong page and you got to scroll and it's just it's a headache. The Ursa Mini makes all that go away. And I think every camera system should look at Blackmagic and go, hey, that's a really good menu. Let's just steal it. I mean, don't steal it, like do your own work. But you know what I mean, like just copy it because it's it's by far the best. I'm sure there's some tweaks they can make to make it a little bit better. But when you're coming from stuff like Sony, the Sony menu, granted, they they say they've changed it a little bit on the A7S III. They've changed the menu to be a little bit better, but I've seen screenshots. It doesn't look that much better. Uh, the Ursa Mini, best menu interface, hands down. And now they have 12K. It's like, like what? Like if you buy that camera, it's gonna last you a long time, a long, long time. Because I don't think we're blowing past that anytime soon. At least not within the next couple of years. So if you make the 12K investment, you know, that's pro that's probably a good investment for the long run. Because you're not gonna feel like your camera got outdated just last year. So for me, probably stick with the G2 Ursa Mini Pro. Not quite worth it to, to make the upgrade, but if you've never shot with the Ursa Mini and you've been looking to make the upgrade and you can afford it, go for the 12K. It would probably be a fantastic camera considering the track record that Blackmagic has had. They're only getting better.